Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. The Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II is a multi-role stealth fighter that many experts consider one of the most advanced aircraft ever built. Though it took its first flight back in 2006, the F-35 we know today wasn't introduced until 2015. However, it has become an iconic aircraft among military and aviation enthusiasts in that short time. All in all, there are three different variations of the F-35, including one for the U.S. Air Force, an aircraft carrier model designed for the Navy, and the U.S. Marines. However, the third variation designed specifically for the Marines even boasts one of the most impressive features of all. The ability to take off and land vertically, not unlike the Harrier jump jet. By 2044, the U.S. military hopes to have nearly 2,500 of these highly advanced aircraft in its arsenal. The F-35 is designed with versatility in mind, which means it can easily embrace a wide variety of roles. One of the most important roles of all is known as Close Air Support, or CAS. This involves performing airstrikes against hostile targets located near friendly forces. It normally relies on the use of rockets, missiles, bombs, and sometimes strafing runs. Here you can see an F-35B practicing hitting various targets which necessitates close communication with the troops on the ground. These types of exercises are performed both during the day and at night to ensure that pilots are prepared for any potential situation. When Lockheed Martin set itself to creating the most advanced fighter jet on Earth, they were serious about their results. Over the development phase, the F-35 underwent several extensive tests, including time spent in a special climactic chamber. This chamber is a place where the aircraft can be subjected to a wide variety of different weather conditions, including extreme cold and heat. This allows engineers and test pilots to get a real idea of how the F-35 and its various components will perform in extreme situations. Throughout the process, this F-35 will remain stationary while simulating different flight modes, including vertical takeoffs and landings. Avionics and other vital systems will also be closely monitored to see how they react during all stages of testing. Though it's fully capable of embracing a number of battlefield roles, the F-35 is, first and foremost, an offensive weapon. In order to maintain its stealth signature, the F-35 has two internal weapons bays, each with four weapon stations. Also, there are two outboard weapon stations that can carry up to 2,500 pounds of ordnance. All in all, the F-35 can carry an impressive variety of missiles, rockets, and bombs. Depending on the weapon's configuration, the Lightning can engage in air-to-air -air or air-to-ground combat at the flip of a switch. 
As with most military aircraft, the F-35 does have a gun. In this case, it's a 25mm GAU-22 capable of firing 3,000 rounds per minute. Arming an aircraft can be a time-consuming process. That's why the Air Force frequently holds competitions for its ground crews to see which group can get its aircraft ready to launch in the shortest amount of time. Here you can see the first time an F-35 Lightning was included in the competition. The other crews are working with F-16s, which are far more familiar to most Air Force personnel. As these missiles and bombs weigh up to 2,000 pounds each, getting them into position require the help of various types of heavy equipment, vehicles, and dollies. And while the competition requires the men and women to move quickly, they are still expected to take all the care they would if handling real live ordnance. The F-35 stealth capabilities are one of its most important features. This is accomplished using several systems, but also through the design of the aircraft itself. Indeed, the airframe boasts what's known as a minimized radar cross-section, which means it's challenging to pick up by radar alone. On top of these, it also incorporates radar absorbent materials built right into the skin of the aircraft. However, to retain this stealthy signature, it's important that the weapons bays be utilized rather than the external hardpoints. Both of these bays can fit a single 2,000-pound bomb or a variety of air-to-air -air missiles. As previously mentioned, the F-35 is often called upon to engage in close air support. This includes strafing runs which is when a particular target area is saturated with bullets from the Lightning's 25mm GAU-22. Though it's capable of firing thousands of rounds in under a minute, the F-35 only carries around 220 rounds at a time. This gives the pilot about four seconds to engage the enemy. Of course, considering each round is 25 millimeters in diameter, these short bursts can be absolutely devastating to both ground targets and enemy infantry. There was a time when guns were the primary air-to-air -air weapons for military aircraft, but those days have long since gone. Now, missiles like this AIM-9 Sidewinder are the main ways in which planes like the F-35 engage the enemy. First introduced back in the 1950s, the Sidewinder is an air intercept missile that weighs just 188 pounds, but measures nearly 10 feet in length. Its solid fuel rocket propels it to speeds of more than Mach 2.5 plus, while the built-in infrared homing guidance system directs the missile into the engines of the enemy aircraft with shocking results. One of the best defenses against fast-moving infrared missiles like the Sidewinder is what's known as a decoy flare. These are aerial countermeasures that typically incorporate magnesium or some other hot-burning metal. 
Once deployed, they will burn at a temperature hotter or equal to that of engine exhaust, which will hopefully force the missile to deviate from its path. Unlike radar-guided missiles, infrared or heat-seeking weapons approach from the rear, making it extremely hard for the pilot to see when they are being targeted. Therefore, flares are normally dispersed in large quantities out the back of the plane. Though most combat planes utilize flares, they are often stored in large numbers aboard cargo aircraft. These high-value targets lack the maneuverability of a fighter and therefore need to engage multiple countermeasures to protect their crews, passengers, and equipment. Here you can see a flare recovery operation taking place aboard a C-17. These soldiers demonstrate how the flare countermeasures work after the flares are manually thrown overboard for recovery later on. When it comes to staying out of trouble, High-powered jets like the F-35 must often rely on their increased maneuverability. In the case of the F-35, you have one of the world's most advanced flight control systems. The F-35A, for instance, boasts a 9G limit and a service ceiling of 50,000 feet. This allows it to pull fast, evasive maneuvers, turns, and loops while varying its altitude to evade enemies on the ground and in the air. Its top speed is around Mach 1.6, or 1,227 miles per hour. This gives it plenty of leeway when it comes time to enter or exit a combat zone. Combined with its fierce armament, it's not hard to see why the F-35 Lightning has a reputation for being a formidable and capable opponent. Of course, its service career is just getting started. No doubt we'll see a lot of the F-35 in future missions. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.